Welcome back to Web Cafe AI, where we do daily chat GPT and AI videos. And today's video is a special one. What I plan on doing essentially is taking a product image, dragging it into a Google Drive folder, and then that will set up the process to automatically create the product's title, description, and so on for Shopify. To start off, I went ahead and just generated a Dalai image for a pair of sunglasses. If you're not familiar with Prompt Base, we sell prompts here, so you could possibly pick up this same prompt I created this with, which is this right here. You can check out our other prompts as well in the description below. But for now, as we know with file naming, you can name a file as long as you want. So for this context, I described what I was selling, purple and gold brim sunglasses, modern, sleek, and high quality. This will come into play as we build out art or zap today. All right, let's go ahead and begin. So we're gonna create a new zap. If you're not familiar with Zapier and AI, make sure to check out that video right there. We show how to implement the two. It is not French, we are in English. And to start off, let's go ahead and name our prompt here. We're gonna call it, or our zap, Shopify product auto. And we're just gonna do the trigger of Google Drive. And then we're gonna do the event of new file and folder. Continue, we're gonna choose our courses account. All right, we're gonna go ahead and choose my Google Drive. And then the folder is gonna be specifically our YouTube zaps. And then it's gonna be Shopify product. And that is where you saw the image I dragged and dropped earlier was already in there. And the reason I did that is because I like using it as a test variable as you'll see as we go from here. So let's go ahead and just test this trigger and you'll be able to see that that specific file that I dragged in there will show up and it has showed up here and if you're not familiar with what's going on you can go ahead and go to the search bar i can type in glasses and as you see that is the title of the image from here let's go ahead and do some ai blocks so we're going to go ahead and fine tune this to chat gbt as that was what we're dealing with here we're going to say conversation i'm going to go continue keep going and we're going to go ahead and say based off this product description semicolon parentheses we're going to go to the title of the product or the title of the image we're going to say generate a uh, product listing title have it optimized for seo and uh, brand awareness so why am i saying brand awareness here because we can add another parameter here or a context block that basically says context the business name is Sun Bathing Co. Whatever it is. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and up some models. So the first model I want to up here is going to be to GPT-4. If you're not familiar why I'm doing GPT-4 instead of GPT-3.5, make sure to check out that video over there as we go over the main difference and why you want to choose GPT-4. But just for a brief summary, essentially, GPT-4 is more for comprehensive and content-oriented use cases. Memory key, think of it as a UI situation where if you're just talking to ChatGPT and OpenAI, it saves each chat. This is going to be a specific chat. It helps fine tune what we're trying to do here. So we're going to say product title. It can be a random characters. We're going to do continue here and we're going to test this action. Okay, so as you see here, we got our title and sometimes ChatGPT will do this thing where generate and put the output in quotes. That is no problem. We're going to go ahead and use a formatter block here in order to remove that as you probably don't want to have that in your end product when you're trying to do this automatic. So we're going to go ahead and choose text because we're converting text. I'm going to do replace is a function. And then we're going to go ahead and put the input as the conversation that we just had. Bring response message wizard and then find the quotation marks. We're going to say replace it with nothing. And then as you see here, the output will just be the simple title of what we're dealing with here. Obviously, if you don't want your branding name in the title, we would remove that context and so on. But for now, this is sufficient of what I'm looking for when it comes to the title for the product for our Shopify website. From here, what we can do is go ahead and create another ChatGPT block as this will be the formatting for the product description. So we're going to do conversation. We're going to continue here. Keep going. And then we're going to do uh, based off this product title. We do semicolon parentheses. And the reason I do parentheses in these contexts is because it allows for the data to be uh, basically not overlap with whatever I'm requesting. So you want to make sure you just, this is good formatting when dealing with ChatGPT and Zapier. And based off this product title, generate 
a product description. Now you can give more context here of what should be in the product description. Maybe there's stuff that you know, such as three to four to five day shipping uh, made with XYZ material. Give that in a context block. But for now, I don't want to have any context. So we're going to say generate a product description and then we we'll add parameters here. I'm going to say generate, uh, uh, use one, uh, would say brief, uh, use sentences and bullet list formatting from there. We're going to upper model to GBT four. And essentially you could in theory use 3.5, but it would just require a lot longer prompts, a lot more prompt structuring and so on. We're gonna have a memory key of product, uh, descript. And then from here, we're going to hit continue. We're going to test this action and we're going to see what it comes up with. All right. So as you see here, it generated product description, very lengthy. I could add a parameter there that basically says max word count 300, but for now we'll keep this as a product description from here. Let's go ahead and add that Shopify block. And then we can work on making sure that we fill in every variable that's requested. So we're going to do Shopify. We're going to say, uh, create a product. And we're going to choose our account. And that's going to be the, uh, race store, I believe here, here, we're gonna do the title of the formatted title here. And then we're going to do the product type the vendor. So this is all stuff we can put in here, but for now we're going to go ahead and grab that description we just created. And then for the product type, we can just put this as a fixed variable, which would be glasses for the vendor. We can put our, uh, pseudo company name, which was Southern sun bathing and co come down here and make that a fixed variable as well. Now we can add some tags here and then we can add a publish, uh, publish at, so maybe like in the future. Um, but for now we're just going to go with the default, which would basically be like right away. We can add a price. So maybe we do nine 99, um, whether the inventory should continue selling when it's out or not, we're going to say continue. Uh, then we have an image URL, more images, you know, more product listing images. And then we got SKUs we can add published. We're going to say true. And then uh, point of sale, we'll say false for the image. We're going to go ahead and go with the file. Just going to find that. So I'm going to try uh, between two different files here because sometimes Zapier likes either their web content file or it looks like they renamed uh, file to queue. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to continue here and we're just going to test this action real quick and see if it works so far. All right, so we're over at our pseudo Shopify, just created a moment developer account. If I come over to products, there we go. So we have our product made, the product name, the type, some bathing co. And then from here, as you see here, we have our product description and then our image, the pricing and so on. So one thing I wanna point out here though, is that the product description doesn't look amazing. Let's go ahead and see what this would look like on the front end. Let's go ahead and preview here and see what this looks like. So as you see, the product description is not amazing. Let's see if Shopify can handle HTML as an input and they'll be able to output this a little bit better. So in order to do so, we're gonna come up here to conversations and we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, use sentences and bullet list formatting and ensure and use HTML uh, SEO best practices. Let's see if this is what we're looking for here because we're basically resetting the chat here. We're going to go ahead and add a one there to have a new memory key as we want a different type of output. Let's go ahead and see what this comes up with. All right. So as you see here, we got our HTML formatting. Let's see if this works. And if it does, that's going to be a very effective situation here as we're going to be able to do um, a lot faster uploading of products. Let's say you like a whole 10 list of products you wanted to jump into a folder and then it would automatically push out each product with a description of everything uh, associated with it. So let's go ahead and see if it does it correct. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna reload this and let's check out the product page real quick. <laughs> amazing. Okay. This is why automation is amazing. So we're going to be able to now have a formatted description. Obviously you could adjust this more, but way better than the text we had before. And now we have fully automated the description making process from here. In theory, I could add some more blocks here in order to get, uh, even, uh, you know, tags associated with it. Maybe I want to have more context for the underlying description. Cause I know more stuff. 
one other thing I want to do here in today's lesson is I'm going to go ahead and regenerate a new product uh, image. I'm going to rename it and I'm going to show you this live. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, another product idea here. So essentially let's go with armchair, see what it comes up with. And from there, we're going to go ahead and choose one of these, add as long of a title as you want, as you can name images very long when it comes to just image naming. From here, I'm going to go ahead and grab this image right here. I'm going to download this image and then let's go ahead and rename it to the length that we choose to and then go through the whole process. All right. So our zap is live. Let's drag that image in there and let's see what happens. All right. Perfect. So as you see here, I renamed it to purple armchair, uh, modern, sleek, made in Germany, comfortable. Uh, obviously, it's just a <laughs> AI image. If you feel like you've learned something so far, make sure to like the video. It helps a lot here with Cafe AI and it's completely free. Make sure to subscribe. We do a bunch of videos like this. So if you already found this either entertaining or very informational, make sure you subscribe. We do a bunch of stuff like this. So for now, we went ahead and dragged the image in there. If you're not familiar with Zapier, what we can do is we can go to history and let's see if the model is running. Perfect. So it's running and we're going to be able to watch this step by step if you chose to do so. But as you see, success, success, and it goes from there. And it, you can basically see it's playing out. You can also see how much token usage was used. If you're not familiar with that, make sure to check out our other videos on that. That basically is associated the cost of to run said flow. As you see, we're going to keep playing here. Let's go ahead and check out our Shopify here. Let's go to our products and let's see when it shows up. All right, perfect. So as you see here, uh, since we prefaced it with our company name, Purple Armchair, Modern and Sleek, Made in Germany for Ultimate Comfort and Style. Let's jump in here real quick. Let's go ahead and preview it. And then from here, as you see, we got our description that was generated, how we had it generated before because of the memory key. Really, really cool stuff. As always, you can find this zap in the description below, completely free. Go ahead and click it, add it to your own zap, your profile. I do plan on releasing a course that's going to be starting a business from scratch to all the way to the end. And we're going to be using Shopify as its platform. So make sure to stay tuned for when I release that course, as we're going to be able to do a lot more stuff when it comes to Shopify and AI automation. Without further ado, make sure to check out that playlist right there where we go over a bunch of other use cases for Zapier and ChatGBT. And I'll see you in the next video.